So we've got a company that is designing a two liter or a 2000 cubic centimeter oil can, and it's going to be a cylinder. And we want to know what dimensions in centimeters will use the least possible amount of material. So we're talking about the amount of material. What is that in relation to this can? What, what sort of calculation would the amount of material be? Surface area? Yeah, it should be a surface area, right? So I'm just going to call that an A for surface area. And what's the surface area of a cylinder? Should be both the bases, right? Each base has got an area of pi r squared. So that'll be 2 pi r squared. And then what's the lateral part? What's the part around it? 2 pi r h. Yeah, 2 pi r <laughs> circumference, right, times the height. So our surface area should be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And from there, <clears throat> we want to minimize that surface area. But what's the problem that we've got here within this equation when we try to take a derivative with respect to r? Three variables. Yeah, we got, we got an extra variable over here. We got an r and an h over here on the right-hand side. So we've got to find some way to get rid of that H. Any thoughts on how we might do that? How are you going to eliminate that H? Any thoughts? Anybody? What other information is given to us in this problem? The volume. Given the volume, right? We got a volume here. So what does our volume need to be? It needs to be 2,000 cubic centimeters. And what's the volume of the cylinder? Pi r squared h. Pi r squared h, which tells us that h is equal to 2,000 over pi r squared. Everybody would agree with that, I hope. Just dividing by the pi r squared. Yes. So all we got to do is take that h, plug it in over here, and we now have surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 2,000 over pi r squared. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. So um, if we simplify that, it should give us area is 2 pi r squared plus, let's see, 2 times the 2,000 ought to be 4,000. The pi is ought to cancel, right? And this ought to become r to the negative one. Everybody uh, okay with that? Yep. All right. So now we will take our derivative. A prime ought to be 4 pi r minus. 4,000 r to the negative 2. And how are we going to find the critical values of this? When a prime equals 0. Yeah, when a prime is 0 or when a prime is undefined. So let's rewrite this as 4 pi r minus 4,000 over r squared and get a common denominator. So I'll multiply my r squared over r squared, which will end up giving us a prime is 4 pi r cubed minus 4,000 over r squared. And so first off, what is this undefined?
zero. Undefined when R is zero, which we can pretty much just ignore because are we going to have a can that has a radius of zero? No. No. And so now we'll just set four pi R cubed minus 4,000 equal to zero or four pi R cubed equal to 4,000. And if we divide by four, that's 1,000. We divide by pi, that's 1,000 over pi, right? R cubed equals 1,000 over pi or cube rooting that we would end up with r equals 10 over the cube root of pi. Good or no? Good. Good. All right. So we'll make a sign chart. Here's 10 over the cube root of pi. And if you needed to, you could use a calculator to make sure you get a value um, to the right and to the left of that. But something that's definitely to the left of that would be like r equals one. So if I go back to here and plug in r equals one, I'm going to have a positive in my denominator and a negative in my numerator. So my function should be decreasing. And if I plug in something more than 10 over the cube root of pi, like, I don't know, how about let's say I mean, 10 would be more than that, right? If we plug in 10 to this, this is going to give us 4,000 pi minus 4,000, which is positive, over another positive. So we're going to get a positive here. So it looks like we do have a minimum surface area when r equals 10 over the cube root of pi centimeters. Um, if we wanted to find the height, our height would be 2,000 over pi times that radius squared. And can we simplify that? 10 squared is what? 100, right? So 2,000 divided by 100 is a 20. And then pi divided by pi to the 2 thirds is pi to the 1 third, or cube root of pi. Everybody good with that or no? Yeah. Yeah. Any issues? before we move on to another one. All right. This will be a fun one. So we're going to, well, I'll give you guys a second to read it on your own first and then we'll start going through it. So take a second to read it and see what we're trying to do. All right, we've got a sphere, right? And within that sphere, we're going to inscribe a right circular cylinder. So something like this, where each of these, you know, the edges of this are touching the sphere, right? Where the, where the, um, furthest left and furthest right most pieces of the base of my circle are touching the outer piece of my sphere. So that's what it would be to inscribe the cylinder into the sphere. So any thoughts on how we're going to figure out what the maximum volume 
of this cylinder could be. What's the volume of a cylinder? Pi R squared H. Pi R squared H, okay. So there's a start. What, what can we do from there? What do we need to do? We need to somehow relate H and R together so we can get one variable. Any thoughts on how we might do that? And rearrange the um, volume formula and then just solve for H. Well, but we don't, we aren't given a volume, are we? So if we were given a volume, we could relate them using the amount of the volume, but we don't actually have the volume. Hold on one second. Sorry that my children are having difficulty behaving today while I'm trying to teach. So we've got a cylinder that's inscribed in our sphere. And it would be great if we knew the volume, because then we could divide and find a relationship between them. But we don't know the volume of the cylinder. The only thing that we're given is a radius of 10 centimeters for the sphere. radius of 10 centimeters there. So anybody see any way we can relate the... The radius is going to link from the center of the sphere to the edge of the, like the corner of the cylinder. All right, so this would also be 10 centimeters? Yeah. And what does that give us? If we have a radius here, what is this value here? This is H, right? So what would this be? That should just be half of the height. And so we should be able to relate these using the Pythagorean theorem. So that would be r squared plus h squared over 4 equals 100. Everybody good with that using the Pythagorean theorem? All right, and since we have an r squared, sorry, say that again. Why good. h squared over 4? Well, Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared, right? So h over 2 squared is h squared over 4. Yeah. yeah. All right, so since we've got an r squared here already, Seems like solving this for r squared would be easy enough, and then we could just substitute the value in. So r squared equals 100 minus h squared over 4. And so we end up with volume equals pi times 100 minus h squared over 4 times h. Or volume is 100 pi h 
minus pi h cubed over 4. Good or no? Good. All right. So v prime ought to be 100 pi minus 3 pi h squared over 4. And all we have to do is set that equal to 0, which should give us 100 pi equals 3 pi h squared over 4. The pi's will cancel. We should get h squared equals 400 over 3, or h equals 20 over root 3. Good or no? And that'd be, that'd be centimeters. Any questions on that? Everybody okay with that? All right, so now we need to make a sign chart to show that this is actually a max. So something less than 20 over three would be like one. If we plug in one to our derivative, we get 100 pi minus 3 fourths pi. That's definitely positive. So we got positive and we're going up. And then we plug in something uh, more than 20 over root three, like, I don't know, let's say 19. So I plug 19 into here. 19 squared um, is 361 times the three divided by four is more than 100. So when I subtract, I should get a negative now. And we end up with a max at h equals 20 over root 3. Good or no? And if we wanted to find the actual volume, um, we would just plug 20 over root 3 into our volume equation. Everyone good or no? Yes. Cool. All right. Let's do one last one. I'll give you guys a chance to try and work through this one on your own. So in this case, we're looking for a minimum cost of something. So you guys want to take about four or five minutes and see if you can work through this on your own? All right, I'll check back in with you in a couple minutes. Ready, go. So we've got a cylinder again. It's open at the top, so there's no top to it. All right, so we're going to say no top. So we don't need to account for that at all. It has a capacity of 24 pi cubic inches, which tells us that the volume is 24 pi. And we're talking about the cost of the material. Oh, that, that didn't look like. There we go. All right. The cost of the material for the bottom, this is 15 cents per inch squared. And the cost for the lateral part of it, the curved part, is 5 cents per inch squared. Okay. And we want to minimize the cost. So there's no cost for the top, so we don't need to worry about that because there is no top. But we do need to worry about the base. So how many square inches are there in the base? Pi r square inches. There's pi r squared square inches, right? So 15 cents for every square inch for the bottom. And how many square inches are there on the lateral part? on the sides. That's 2 pi r h, right? And those cost 5 cents per square inch. Everybody good with that? Yeah. 
Okay. And the problem, once again, is we have R's and we have H's. So our volume, which is 24 pi, is equal to the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h. So I could resolve this. H equals 24 pi over pi r squared or 24 over r squared. Good or no? Yes. All right, so our new cost equation is going to be cost is 15 pi r squared plus 5 times 2 ought to be 10 times pi times r h, which is 24 over r squared. So 10 times 24 ought to be 240 pi. And then r over r squared ought to be r to the negative 1. <clears throat> And so that should be our final cost equation, all in terms of one variable, which we can now take the derivative of C prime ought to be 30 pi R minus 200, 240 pi R to the negative. And we need to get a common denominator. So we'll multiply this by R squared and this by R squared. So that C prime is 30 pi r cubed minus 240 pi over r squared. And having a radius of zero where we have a critical value where the cost um, derivative is undefined, doesn't make any sense, right? We're not going to have a cylinder with a radius of zero, so we just need to look at the numerator. 30 pi r cubed minus 240 pi equals zero, and we'll solve for r. And if we solve for r, first off, we're going to end up with r cubed equals 240 pi over 30 pi, so r cubed equals 8, or r equals 2. <clears throat> and if we make a sign chart, something less than 2, like 1, into our derivative, will give us 30 pi minus 240 pi, which is a negative over a positive, and something more than 2, like 3, um, that's 27 times 30, that's 810 pi minus 245, which is a positive over a positive, which is positive. And so we have a minimum when R is two inches. And that's what we want, it was a minimum cost. And if R is two, height should be 24 over R squared, which ought to be six inches. Good or no? Any questions on that or no? Nope. All right, that's optimization. So you can see there are lots of different types of problems. You know, we did these ones where we had to look at uh, the distance formula. We did some where we had to come up with our own formulas for an area with labeling a bunch of variables. And then, you know, sort of different types. A lot of them end up where you have um, two different variables, R and H, and you've got to convert it all into one variable by relating like maybe the volume or the surface area that is given to you in the problem. Uh, so this idea where you got to relate the radius and the height, especially for cylinders, pops up quite often. So just sort of keep that in mind as you're going through. Anybody have any questions at all on optimization problems? All right, that's it. We don't have time to start related rates, so that'll be on Monday, it would appear. <laughs>